Let's bring in the president of the International Committee of the Red Cross, Marjana Spolarik, for more. I know you just visited Gaza and the West Bank, Marjana. So what stood out to you from what you saw there? Good morning. I've just returned from Israel and the West Bank, and I visited Gaza before that. I I see a lot of suffering, untenable levels of civilian suffering on both sides. I met with Israeli families, families of the hostages. They're increasingly despairing about the fate and well-being of, of their relatives, and it's becoming increasingly dangerous for them indeed. I also saw a drastic, a really unacceptable humanitarian situation in Gaza with many wounded, many, many dead, um, lack of medical assistance, lack of ability to operate as a humanitarian actor due to the intensity of the operations and the situation overall. So it's extremely complex. It's extremely difficult for us at the moment. Now, Mirjana, the World Health Organization says that Gaza can't afford to lose any more hospitals. How dire is the situation there when it comes to medical care? It's, it's unacceptable. There is less and less surgical capacity. The North has entirely lost its surgical capacity, according to my information. We weren't able to move to the North when I was there, but the hospital I saw in the South lacked almost everything. I mean, there's a lack of water, electricity, medication, space, surgical capacity, doctors, they operate around the clock, everybody is exhausted, and there's simply no more room. Uh, people arrive at the hospital with day long, day old wounds, meaning that they risk amputation or risk their lives because they haven't been able to reach treatment early enough. Now, I know you've also met with Israeli officials and families of hostages. What are they telling you? And is there any chance that aid groups will be allowed to visit these hostages held by Hamas? We are working with everyone to be able to access the hostages, but it also has to be clear to everyone that the modalities according to which we can access the hostages need to be agreed between the parties negotiated through a third party, in this case, Qatar. So we hope that the parties will remain at the negotiation table and agree on these modalities so that we can resume accessing the hostages. And ideally, this is what we demand implement the release of the hostages. We have so far been able to release 109 hostages in cooperation with both sides, also with the Israeli authorities, and we urgently want to re resume this work. And the UN Security Council is set to hold another vote on a ceasefire, hoping to avoid another U.S. veto. What's at stake for your teams working in the region? What we need is to see an urgent and rapid and significant de-escalation, a significant reduction of hostilities, safe spaces for humanitarians to operate and for the civilian population to secure themselves because currently no place in Gaza is secure. No place in Gaza is secure and safe from coming under attack. We cannot operate on a planning basis. We have to move when we can and we have very limited space. We also have very limited possibilities to bring in new material to rotate our staff. What we need is a functioning mechanism that will allow us to provide humanitarian assistance at a significant level. It is currently not possible anywhere in Gaza. All right, President of the International Committee of the Red Cross, Mariana Spoyerovich. Mariana, thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.